This Masters preview and NFL DFS Week Ten Picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. MyBookie is doing everything they can to help DGens only cash big, including a fifty percent deposit bonus on your first deposit. That's MyBookie.ag promo code SGP to get a fifty percent deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a new daily fantasy sports app built specifically for player props. Download the app in the App Store and use promo code SGP for an instant deposit match up to fifty dollars. That's ThriveFantasy.com promo code SGP. Sign up and prop up today. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at AcePerHead.com/sgp. That's AcePerHead.com/sgp. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean. Stacking the money green with my partner in picks, right? Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Cram Dog? I guess in hindsight, we should be wearing our golfing attire. Yes, although this is a uh, this SGP windbreaker that I'm I'm rocking here. I guess it, it's like a pullover, whatever you call it. Hmm. Three quarter zip, I think, is the official term, or quarter zip. Uh, works great for golf. Yeah. Yeah, as does this uh, nice sport uh, lightweight sweatshirt. <laughs> but both can be found in the merch store. Both Sean. can be found. Is this a commercial? No, what just happened. Not. But uh, man, it is it is a awesome week for sports and sports gambling. Of course, it's too much, right? Too is much? happening right now as we're recording. Got a little action on the side, a little side action. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, then Thursday night football. Friday night college football, Saturday college football, Sunday NFL, and of course Thursday through Sunday we're talking Masters. So man, there is just so much, so much going on. And if that wasn't enough, Ryan, if that wasn't enough, huge what? announcement. This is the announcement music. What's going? This is on? the announcement music. Two part announcement. One, we will be broadcasting live from the. Circa Las Vegas Sportsbook on Thursday. This Thursday, a pregame show for the Colts Titans game. Kicking off around four o'clock Pacific, seven o'clock East. So we're gonna be broadcasting live from their podcast studio. Tune in. YouTube.com slash sports gambling podcast.com, or I'm sure we'll be streaming it live as well on our Twitter at gambling podcast. So tune in. That's gonna be fun. And on that show, we will announce how we're giving out the $500 cash prize, which you guys so rightly earned by stuffing the athletic football podcast in the locker. It belongs. So a big Thursday and maybe even talk a little recap round one for the masters. It's, it's going to be fun. We're going to be doing a live show from the circa mm. tune in Ryan Tune oh. in. I mean, and you're going to want to tune in live because there's going to be a certain uh, limit to the number of entries to get your $500. Because uh, we have to do a little contest. Uh, that's the uh, most fair way. Show to us you care. Cash. Show yeah. us you care. They showed the audience showed they cared by putting the uh, putting the athletic football podcast in the locker. Now, time to get a reward. Hear how you're going to get your reward this Thursday from the circuit. Looking forward. We already got it when we uh, we did a tour, of course, of uh, Circa. A good buddy Derek showed us around. Podcast studio was looking really nice. So, looking forward to breaking that in. And this, uh, to be clear, though, this is not like a uh, you know huge event. And hopefully, knock on wood, if you're with us, fingers crossed, the vaccine's good to go. Maybe we do a giant event come March Madness. But Thursday night, oh, it's gosh. all going down. 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 o'clock East, a fun pregame show, recap of the Masters. Doing it all. Doing it all. Hearing that music, you know what time it is. That's right. It's time to talk about the Masters. And if you're talking about the Masters, it means you're thinking about the Masters. And if you're thinking about the Masters, you're most certainly thinking about gambling on the Masters. And you can do that over at mybookie.ag, where we recommend. For my friends, hello friends. You want that 50% deposit bonus? Use the promo code SGP over at mybookie.ag where much like the toast, you won't get burnt that I so much enjoy. Head over to mybookie.ag, use that promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid. 
Joining us on the line to talk about the Masters, the master himself of golf gambling, co host of the Golf Gambling Podcast, Steve Shermer. Steve, how are we feeling? Oh, we're feeling great. It's Masters Week. I mean, it's about six months too late here. And, uh, you know, you made reference to uh, Jim Nance's burnt toast, and I can only imagine <laughs> that. It's probably been sitting in the toast for about six months. This house <laughs> in Pebble Beach is probably aflame right now <laughs> with how burnt that thing is. But no, I mean, we're finally here. We made it. There was a lot of doubt back in the spring if this was even going to happen, but let's go. It's a fall masters. We're probably never going to see this again. So enjoy it this week and, you know, bet smart and uh, bet freely as well. <laughs> I mean, I, what I love is, that. What, I love that advice. Bet freely. What more importantly, what, what is Tony Romo going to do? Wow. And secondly, this is a rare opportunity to do some proper cross sport parlaying, Sean. Yes. I, I know we get it for Super Bowl time, but it's not the same when you have the Masters. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to Tony Romo have, being an orphan for one week. Uh, and I'm also looking forward. <laughs> Jim? Jim? Where are you, Jim? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, he's I'm not going to be I'm here. Tom. <laughs> oh, i sorry. I only know Jim. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be missing his Jim doll, but Jim's gonna be covering the Masters, of course, in Augusta. We're gonna talk some players, give out kind of a Kramer and I will give out a DFS lineup. Steve can kind of grade it on the fly, but uh, it, let's just talk big picture here. I've been doing my research, aka reading your articles, and <laughs> like you said, this is a historic once in a lifetime Fall Masters. Weather is seemingly kind of in the mix. How are you uh, taking a handicap on it overall? Just factoring in that maybe there's some rain. Looks like later in the weekend, getting a little bit more wind. How does that impact who you should bet on? Well, I mean, it's too bad that we're going to get so much rain because when this was planned, you know, way back in the spring that we're going to have a fall, you know, masters, it's like, oh, I mean, the leaves going to be changing. It's going to be firm and fast, going to be cold. And those are the toughest scoring conditions at the Augusta when the winds are up, it's chilly, the ball doesn't fly as far. But unfortunately, I mean, there's, there's, I don't know about, I mean, about California, but up here in New York, it's 70 degrees the last couple of days and it's warm pretty much everywhere on the Eastern coast. So the ball is going to be flying, um, you know, and there's gonna be a lot of rain. What the rain does to the golf course is it widens the fairways and it makes it softer. It makes the greens more receptive too. So that's really going to favor longer hitters this week. The ball is not going to roll out as far on the fairway. So if you want to target a guy with really long carry distances, hits the ball really high, hits it far. I think those guys are going to have a little bit of an edge this week. Yeah. Normally it sounds like Bryson. Yeah, exactly. Normally Bryson. It's <laughs> like I, I'm just picturing it's too bad. Bryson isn't a total meathead, like a real meathead. This not this like nerdy <laughs> dude who found steroids during covert because it wouldn't it be great to have like the, the sand, the, the, the happy Gilmore crowd just show up Oh yeah, to a, to a guy. I, I, I just, I, I feel like as someone who tried to go see Augusta national one time when I was in the beautiful city of Augusta, Georgia, and realized you can't do anything but drive by the wall outside. I want to <laughs> see the common man be led inside the ground, the hallowed grounds. Oh yeah. I mean, they have a lot of restrictions that people come in. I, they've <laughs> even cracked down on the third, you know, the secondary market sales of, you know, you know, oh, selling your tickets it. online. Let yeah, some of the uh, plebs into I'll the. I'll tell you how bad it is. People who live in Augusta, you think they would have some sort of preferential treatment? No, most of them leave town, rent out their houses, and they're allowed to enter a lottery for the par three. Wow! <laughs> they, they, yeah, don't, yeah. they don't even give give them any sort of like proper access to like tickets to the event. But you want to come out for the par three? Come on out! Well, locals. and they the club also is buying out all of like the trailer parks around the course <laughs> because they want to build a new media center. So they basically pay off these poor families, you know, with like hundred thousand dollars or so, which is probably you know much less than what that land is really worth to Augusta National. Just go away. But you know, I mean, listen, they've we've talked about in this podcast before how like. Augusta national is basically a bubble surrounded by Alabama, you know, just a bunch of fast food <laughs> restaurants, you know, a bunch of strip malls and everything. So, uh, but I mean, inside the walls, I mean, it is a truly magical place and it's really going to look good. It's going to look good, you know, in the fall and it's going to look different too. I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to be probably as popping green as it would be back in the spring because, you know, we've only had about eight weeks or so with the overseeded bent grass, you know, that, that really, like emerald green, like turf that you usually see. It's probably going to be a little more Bermuda this time, just because it's been so warm. You haven't killed off all the Bermuda grass, but I mean, 
you know, there's not gonna be flowers either, but overall, I mean, I, I'm gonna looking forward to it. It's still going to be the same, you know, masters uh, as always. I was out front this morning when my gardener was here mowing the lawn and I was, I was doing some, some hardcore grass analysis. Cause I knew, I knew that we were going to get into it tonight. And then, you know what? That was, I realized I don't know shit about grass. I'm going to let Steve well, be the expert. Right. So we, we have the two premier grass experts I, on the podcast right now I don't rock between it, you know? Steve and uh, Kramer. All right, let's get to the uh, let's get to the big dogs. Bryson, of course, is the favorite right now. I'm looking at the odds over at mybookie.ag. He is down to plus <laughs> six hundred. That is, I mean, I you laid out a, a you know we already kind of hit on some of the points of why he might be able to uh, really strike the ball well here and put up a good run. But six to one, that's a bit insane for me. Is do you think the hype's warranted though, Steve? Well, I mean that, that price has come down. I think earlier today it was eight to one. So yeah. that's, that's pretty crazy. I mean, I can't remember odds that low at Augusta since tiger, basically. I mean, it's a tiger was usually about even odds at almost every major, but six to one in a pretty stacked field. That's a lot, but listen, there's been a lot of think pieces and from myself included. I mean, either on the podcast, either <laughs> on sports gambling podcast.com. I mean, I, I I've tried to lay the case of why Bryson could possibly set the scoring record this week just because of favorable weather, weather conditions and what he's planning to do into the golf course. I mean, you hear, you see all these articles and all these reports about how many wedges he's going to have in all these greens. So let's try and make a counter argument, you know, for a second, what, what's going to go wrong for Bryson? Well, I mean, much been made about how he's hitting a bunch of nine irons wedges, you know, et cetera, into all these greens. That's going to give him an advantage, mostly on the par fours, because those are pretty tough. Those are where the bogey holes are in a company. If he's going to, you know, hit wedge in every green, it's going to be hard for him to post a big score. But we've seen earlier in the summer where, you know, he tried to do this bomb and gout strategy hit as far as he can. And he just isn't sharp with his irons and with his wedges. And that's kind of borne out when you look at this proximity stats, um, you know, in 2020. So from 100 to 125 yards, you know, like probably like a sandwich distance from him, he was only about 105th on tour of proximity hits at about 20 feet, which, you know, was fine. But I mean, if you got a sandwich in hand, you know, it's go time there. You got to usually stick it, you know, about, you know, 15 feet or so to give yourself a good look. You know, he's sitting at about 20 feet. It's, it's about tour average. And you know, when, if you move out 25 yards farther, he's 169th on tour. So the wedges haven't really been on point, but here's the thing. If you want to try and make that argument for why you want to go away from Bryson is with, with how wet the golf course is going to be and how much, how basically how long it's going to play for most players. Once the ball hits the ground, it's basically going to stop. Bryson hits it farther and higher than even the most longest hitters in the, in the field. You know, he carries it about three fourteen on average <laughs> off the tee. The next closest competitor is Matthew Wolf, who carries it a full 10 yards shorter than that. And That's then crazy. most guys, yeah, like Justin Thomas, we think of him as a long hitter. He only carries about two and eighty-eight off the tee. So, I mean, if if Justin Thomas and Deshambo were ever paired together, Deshambo's probably going to be hitting like thirty yards ahead of JT on every tee shot. So it's humiliated it, for Justin Thomas. <laughs> it is. I mean, you basically build a Walmart between him and uh, Bryson. So, listen, like even if Bryson is like has his B game with his wedges, from where he's hitting from, he's still going to be hitting it closer to the pin on average than everyone else, because everyone else can be hitting it farther away. I mean, if you look at just where the average, where people on average hit it from about 150 yards, they usually hit it about, you know, 28 feet from the pin. Bryson's probably gonna have about 30 or 40 yards head start on him. And he hits it to 20 feet. So he's got about 10 feet you know, advantage there. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to limit if, if the plan as he is laying it, if it works to perfection, no one is beating him because no one can do what he does. And I laughed at a, I laughed at his strategy at Wingfoot just because, listen, he can't bomb it everywhere. It's penal rough. Like he's not very good with his wedges, and he blew out the field. So I'm done doubting Bryson. I'm starting to Bryson's listen to him. Converted more. Uh, Steve. We've wow. come a long way, Ryan. Well, I mean, I, I was a fan of the of what he was doing in the, in the early part of the, of the year. Then he sucked, and I started to criticize <laughs> him for. It. And now he's figured everything out. And I, I and I kind of thought this whole thing was mostly about just to show up Brooks Kepka because they had to do a little, you know, beef at the PGA last year, Brooks or Bryson bulked up, maybe trying to intimidate Brooks, but <laughs> it's, it, it's all legit now. Like he, he finally gets it. Like at the end of the day, we make fun of Bryson because you know, he's a scientist, you know, so to say, but <laughs> golf is physics. Like 
the way you swing up a club to the ball and how hard you hit it, it's going to go a certain direction. Then you have how wind impacts it, how moisture impacts it, how humidity impacts it. He's figured out what it does in all these different conditions. So am I going to say that, you know, he's going to exactly do it. I mean, it's up to him. Like at the end of the day, like he has to hit his wedge as well. But if he does the, the way I know this golf course, it is not equipped to handle a guy like Bryson doing what he's planning on doing. And if he does it to perfection, he's running away with it. So it sounds well, like the hype kind of warranted, but here's what I'm, I'm not, I'm not taking with. any golfer at six to one. I'll be honest. You, you mentioned a couple of things, but the number one thing that I would have concerns about, it's one thing to pick a fight, even in a U.S. open course that hosts every once in a while. But these are hallowed grounds. There are ghosts. You don't smack history in the face. I, I, here's what I'm concerned about a people at, at Augusta rooting against him because they don't want him to undo this precious golf course. And that negative en- energy <laughs> is going to seep into him. The pressure will be too heavy. And, and quite frankly, this is, he is a scientist because he found a way to create false drip. And I don't want the Kramer gang. I don't want the listeners of this fine program to be confused by the drip. This man possesses Sean. I'm just, I, he's calling a shot. He's babe Ruth pointing to the fucking outfield, stepping into the most hallowed grounds in golf. I give me fade fade action, baby. Fade. Yeah. I, I, I got, I got to fade him. And again, even though America is now embracing science, I don't think they're going to embrace the science that well, Bryson DeChambeau is throwing out there. Well, this science comes in a needle, Sean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Allegedly, allegedly. Uh, tiger, of course, obligatory tiger talk, Steve, before we get your take on his chances at the tournament, which I, I think you, anyone, even the most, even uh Ryan Connor, friend of the program, who's a diehard tiger fanboy, saying, Oh, this cold weather is not going to be ideal for the back. He, he of course is allowed to select the menu for the masters champions dinner Mm. because he won last year. And I don't know what the hell is going on in this guy's life, but what did he pick uh, steak? Okay. Okay. That's awesome. And chicken fajitas and sushi. That, that to me is just an odd combination. Someone misses a buffet. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That that feels like something you get at a buffet. Steaks. Awesome. Fajitas are awesome. Maybe put those together, but sushi and uh, Alabama probably has some great Southern country cooking, like well, some Georgia, Georgia. Yeah. What did I well, say? I mean, Alabama. Yeah, it's a slight, slight step Way up off, in class, but I'm saying no it, offense to Alabama, maybe some fried foods, some, ch- you know, gravy. I, I'm just imagining some like comfort foods, sushi. You're not getting great sushi in Georgia. I'm sorry. Wow. Steve, they are close to the water Sean. Yeah, but that's not where you get the sushi. Steve, <laughs> what do you, what do you think on tiger's chances right now? Any, any my bookie chan- has him at 3000 or plus 3000. So 30 to one, <laughs> maybe tiger thought sushi meant something else. <laughs> yeah. Is that the 19th hole? He's trying, he's trying to poison. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Some of the other, uh, you were asking Steve if there's value. Oh yeah. I mean, tiger, any, any uh, build us a scenario where tiger has a good run. Well, I mean, listen, like we all know tiger's history there. It seems like at least his tiger, at least his fans are just convinced that he can just walk onto the course and everything is all cured. No problems at all. But I'm looking at tiger and I look at that performance a couple of weeks ago at Sherwood, a place that I said on the golf gambling podcast would be a really good fit for him that I thought would kind of kickstart him a little bit because he didn't have to use the driver a whole lot. There was a lot of importance on, you know, hitting the iron. Well, he's played well there in the past. And he was basically DOA from the start. And that was when I finally realized that, you know what? I think it just, he, it, it, the end is near, I think for tiger. And I (laughs) I don't know exactly when it happened because if we flash, if we go back about a year ago, he won over in Japan and then he was the best player on the president's cup. And he actually started the PGA tour year really well. He played really well at Torrey Pines. I think he finished fifth. Like it looked like, you know, before COVID and everything, all happened that like, I mean, he might be able to defend his master's run. And then all of a sudden at the LA open at the Genesis, you know, in your backyard, something happened. He just was flat all week. I don't know if there's some sort of secret injury he's fighting, but ever since then, like if you watch tiger out there, there's just no energy. It looks like he's just moping around and just going through the motions. And it really just showing up in the stats too, you know, all year, he's only played 29 rounds all year long, which is one of the lowest sample size of anybody in this field. So there's not a lot of 
rounds, you know, as you know, where he's been able to shake off the rust. But he's only gained about 0.07 strokes tee to green, about field average. Like that, that's not very good for here. You know, he's gained about half a shot per round with his irons, which is good. But Tiger's not doing well off the tee or scrambling or putting in order to overcompensate that. Like he needs to get that number up if he wants to compete. So listen, like, can he go to Augusta and just turn around magically? Yeah, he could. I mean, he knows it like the back of his hand, but I, I, I don't see a lot of hope here. And I, and I, I, I think we keep waiting for him to just, you know, snap his fingers and turn it on. And it, it just, there might just not be any gas left in the engine. Yeah. I think last, you know, l- last year's masters, that was his like, Hey, waving goodbye. This is, you know, one, one big green jacket, one last big win on the way out. And uh, yeah, a chip in a chair, Sean, a exactly. chip in a chair. That's all he needs. All right. Let's uh, let's just get into it. Talk DFS lineup. That's probably a good way to kind of get Steve's take on some of the golfers. We like make fun of our picks, make fun of our picks. And of course, golf gambling podcast, make sure you subscribe Apple podcast, Spotify, wherever you wherever uh, great podcast download. Yeah. As, as you're listening to this, there, there's probably three fresh Three full episodes breaking down the Masters, oh, hot, 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 hot. sitting on the hot, Golf hot, Gambling hot, Podcast feed, skyrocketing up the golf podcast charts all the way twenty four right now. Wow! So and and we moving were, day for the Golf Gambling Podcast. I think Steve was alerting us to the fact that through the DFS show, they're already north of two hours of content <laughs> for the Masters. Still, one more preview coming. So so much. Uh, Sean, can I get started? Go for it. All right. So we talked about Bryson. We mm-hmm. talked about how he's calling out the course. He's calling out history, the ghosts of Matt, the masters past. Everyone is going against him. Meanwhile, it's master season. So what, what's your boy real money Kramer doing drip constructing squad. the drip squad Brooks Kepka under 10,000. Are you kidding me? I don't care what kind of form <laughs> he's in. Give me that motherfucker. He's not losing to Bryson this weekend. We, you, you start your drip at the top as much as I wanted to get that cokehead Dustin Johnson in here. Cause he's playing well. He, he's also a mental case. So give me Brooks Kepka, the best looking golfer on tour as we speak. Well, one of the best. Well, right. I'm not going to dispute your uh, good looks comment there, but to me, when you're putting these lineups together, it seems like you got to have one of these big dogs. Yeah. That's and, Brooks, and, baby. And Steve laid out a case <laughs> of uh strokes gained. I think T to green. That's the key stat you want to look at. And Justin Thomas, he's doing very well in that. And then I think approach to green as well. He, yeah, but who's leading the tour and strokes gained off the course? Uh, That's Brooks Kepka, <laughs> baby. <laughs> and he looked uh Justin Thomas. I like a guy, he his stats match up with the course and also coming in with a little bit of heat. Um, you know, played pretty well in the Zo Zo championship. So Justin Thomas, he's my big dog at ten thousand seven hundred. Steve, uh what what are your early thoughts on these? DFS picks. Well, these are two guys I really like. So let's start with Brooks Kepka for a second. So we all know him as someone who is just going to crescendo for a mass for before a major. It's happening again. Like I mean, he's for whatever reason he can just turn you know the light switch on and off, and he did it last week. You know, he started off a little slow in Houston, made the cut, but you know he noticed he wasn't performing very well off the tee. So he switched from he was using a new driver Thursday, Friday, went back to his old driver, and all his off the tee stats just did really well. And that led him to shoot 65, 65 on the weekend. So, you know, his iron game started to come around. He started to putt better. I mean, he's definitely ready. And you, if, if you want to think about guys, cause I mean, me personally, I know you guys don't think so, but I think all roads are going to go through Bryson. Like Bryson is the big, bad villain of the video game that you gotta be. <laughs> and so if you want to think about guys who can go toe to toe to him, had the firepower to match him off the tee, that's a guy like Brooks Kepka. And it's also a guy like Justin Thomas. Like he's not as long off the tee as Bryson, but what he makes up for, he's a much better iron player. He's much better scrambler. Uh, So, and he's gotten better. He doesn't have great course history at Augusta national, but he's gotten better and better every year. And one of the things about Justin Thomas is, you know, he, he loves the masters because he's basically a, he's a fanboy. Like he's a tiger fanboy. grew up, you know, idolizing him and he wants to win the the masters so badly. And one of the things he said in the past is he kind of gets in his own head a little bit when he goes there. But I think with no fans at Augusta national, that's going to help him stay in the moment, kind of focus a little bit. And listen, he's got all the shots in order to win here. There's no excuse why he hasn't had a top 10. So I think at the very least, I think Justin Thomas is going to have his best performance yet at the masters. I don't know if it's good enough to win, but I think that's a good that's a good pick for DFS just because his floor is really high because of how well he can score pretty much everywhere uh, on the course. Love his golf game, but not enough drip for me, Sean. Who's your next guy? My next guy, the ultimate 
the ultimate bizarro drip guy. He touts a pink driver. I don't know if he still does that. I assume he does. He knows this course. I, I didn't know this, Sean. He's only won at three courses in his career. Uh, uh, Augusta being one of them. Bubba Watson for nine thousand. Give me this guy. He he's kind of the father figure of the team. But we know we know this guy touts a religious lifestyle. But I got a I got a feeling, Sean. He he likes a little side action. <laughs> He's a yeah. creative motherfucker on the course. I have a feeling he brings that creati- creativity to his personal life. Nine thousand. Give me Mr. Bubba Watson. Perhaps Sean, it's just the, it's just the fact that nine years ago in the second year of the golf or in the sport of the sports gambling podcast, we gave out Bubba Watson to win the Masters. That was many years One ago. One of our first big wins in the history of this program. So he has a special place in the heart of DGens only. Bubba Watson, baby, nine thousand. Well, this guy, he's maybe he's the next Bubba Watson because he also helped uh, me when uh, I think I gave him out at 35 to 1 to win the PGA <laughs> Championship. Give me Colin Moore. Oh, that's your, that's your boy. I like this guy's game. I like his aggressiveness. I mean, you saw that closing out the PGA Championship where he just kind of went for it. He has some moments where he's cold, certainly, but he's he's a young stud who I think. You know, you see this in sports all the time where it's like he doesn't know to be uh intimidated by how big this moment is. And I like I kind of like the fact that he's a Stanford kid and the fact that you grew up playing in the uh or you know, at least your college days in the Bay Area, probably used to playing in a little cooler weather, dealing with the light rain and uh, possibly some winds that you expect to see towards the end of the weekend. So, Colin Morikawa 9500. Steve, what's the analysis? All right. Well, I need to fact check both you guys because both <laughs> you guys said something a little off about each one. So let's start about okay. Bubba Watson. So Kramer, I mean, I, I appreciate you, you know, trying to look at Bubba's wins and everything, but he's won it more than three golf. Okay. Courses. He's so won maybe- it at least four or five. So, you know, but, but you know, I'll, I'll give you a pass there. Listen, I, I love the pick of Bubba. I think a lot of people love the pick of Bubba just because I mean, listen, you got the course history one there twice is like Bubba has his certain golf courses and Augusta is one of them. He's also playing great coming in. Only Dustin Johnson has gained more strokes T to green in his last four tournaments than Bubba Watson has. So the ball striking is on point. He's a long hitter. You know, his, his putting is what's really been dragging him down. He's been really struggling with that all year, but he knows the greens at Augusta. He knows how to put them. He might be able to overcome that. I, I think that's a good pick. And then as for Colin Moore, Colin, like um, not a Stanford guy. He's from Cal. He's a Cal Berkeley guy. <laughs> oh, so. that's right. Well, yeah, they're all, listen, they're I mean, all the same. They're, Sean, not the yeah, private I mean, school. Come on now. It's the Bay Area. Listen, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean they're 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 book they're uh, bookworms too over in Cal, just like Stanford. <laughs> so, so I agree with you with Morikawa in the fact that he's an excellent ball striker. That like Justin Thomas, like there's a lot of ways T to Green he can score. Here's the problem with Morikawa though. It's two things. One. He's really short off the tee. He only carries about 283. So right there, he's going to be at a little bit of a disadvantage. And ever since the PGA, he hasn't really done as well with his irons. Like he's gained about 0.6 strokes tee to, or, uh, with his irons since in, in his last four tournaments, which is great. But when he was when he won the PGA, like when he was won and he won, when he won at uh, Murfield Village as well, he's gained over a stroke per round with his irons. So that's tailed off a little bit. And he's really struggling with the putter again. I think he's lost strokes, uh, putting his last four tournaments. It hasn't really been right since then. So, you know, I mean, he is, this is the first time he's going to be playing Augusta too. Do you really want a guy who's struggling putting on these difficult greens? I don't know. So, wow. This um, is what it feels like to be inside a locker ride. Yeah. This, (laughs) and and you know what, if I had a nickel for every time I was the size doesn't matter, Sean, don't worry about the length. Um, real, real quick. Uh, what I meant to say, Steve was more than more than half of his wins, Ooh, seven out angle. of twelve, can't have come at three courses: Riviera, TPC, River Highlands, and Augusta National. Who's your next guy, Kramer? My next guy. Well, let's stick with the drip. And while I was being nice to you, where length doesn't matter, length absolutely matters. Tony Finau. Not only does he have length, but this motherfucker played on a busted-up ankle. I like the grit. I like the determination, and I like. I, I just like his moxie. Give me Tony Finau, Sean, 8,800. Hey, I don't mind that pick. I'm going Matthew Wolf, oh. 8,500 guy. Who's always kind of uh kind of always in the mix there. Like Steve said earlier in the pod has some nice length yep. and uh, yeah, he's only 8,500 pretty solid overall. As far as approach to the green off the tee strokes, gain T to green. And uh, my brother, 
gave me that pick. Same one who turned me on oh. to Colin Morikawa. So <laughs> got to ride the hot hand He's, at eighty five hundred. Steve's about to shit on his current form, but let, <laughs> let's hear about it. All right. So let's start with Tony Finau. So, I mean, he's a great fit for this golf course. He's long. He's a good iron player. I mean, the knock on him is that he doesn't win, but I mean, at 8,800 bucks, you don't need him to win. Like if he finishes in the top 10, you're perfectly fine there. Um, in two tournaments there, he's gained almost three strokes on the field at Augusta national. So that's really good. He's a decent scrambler. I, I like to pick this week as for Matthew Wolf. I, I like this too. Like, listen, he is struggling coming in, but he had a little bit of an ankle injury at the Zozo and the CJ cup had a week off. Maybe that's a little healed again. And where he was struggling, surprisingly was off the tee, which is one of the strengths in the game. But I think he's going to get that fixed. He's a long hitter. His iron play has still been really good. Even when he's struggling, the only thing, and I, I have high hopes for him, but you know, you talk about guys at Augusta national and it's really important to hit the ball in both directions. And you know, Matthew Wolf is kind of a little bit like Zoolander. He can only hit the ball right to left. He can only go one direction, just like uh, <laughs> Zoolander can when he turns on the, uh, the catwalk there. But um, yeah, I mean that like, it's important to hit the ball right to left. You know, some guys have an advantage when they do that. I'm like 13, you can cut the corner, but when, when he's asked to hit the ball left to right, hit a fade, the guy just doesn't do it. He kind of is just a one trick pony with that, but he's very good at it, but that's all he does right now. So, I mean, I, I do have high hopes for him. He's going to be a guy I like as a top 10 prop this week. Um, Ooh, yeah, nice. I think scores are going to be really low. He's a guy that's really explosive. You know, he can put up a really low score at the drop of a hat. So I, I like both p- p- picks there. Good job. Good job, guys. Uh, you know, I I keep hearing. Yeah, Steve is being very kind. He hasn't completely shit on me yet, uh, other than uh, <laughs> fact checking me. Next up, Sean, uh, I'm gonna go. I think the merits of this man's drip still to be determined. But he has. When I've played him, he scores. He gets. He birdies the fuck out of the ball. And last week, he was leading the field in shots gained off the tee. Good driving work. You know what that means. You're gonna. It's gonna fit. At Augusta, give me Scotty Scheffler. Ooh, okay. seventy-eight hundred. Uh, this guy, Ryan, he yep. had a, a top five in okay. two thousand eighteen. Again, coming in a little hot, and you know, you start out with the big dogs. You're you're trying to get some value plays here. All the way from Australia, Cameron Smith. Oh, there's he, some drip. Close, Aussies have drip. Yeah, he's got a five under, uh, sixty-seven. The final round of the Zozo Championship. So coming in with some confidence. And again, he's the top five in uh, or finished fifth in 2018. So he knows the course, no pressure coming in off a uh, nice round. I, I think at 7,300, decent value. Steve, what do you think of these guys? Well, let's go with, start with Scotty Shuffler. And I mean, he was one of the hottest golfers yeah, on the planet leading up to, I think the U S open, but then he got COVID and then he came back and he kind of struggled a little bit, kind of like a little bit how Cam Newton has struggled ever since he got COVID. So, but last week, it's a COVID brain fog. Yeah. Something like that. So, you know, so last week he started off really well. I think he shot three under on Thursday, had a really, really bad Friday and Saturday. He kind of put himself out of the term, which is too bad. I had a bet on him at 28 to one. I was feeling pretty good after Thursday. And then he just completely crapped the bet after that. But you know, Sunday, he put it all together. I think he shot five under and he bookend basically two really good rounds and two really bad rounds. So listen, I mean, he is pretty long. The only thing he's a little bit of a low ball hitter. So I think that's going to reduce a little bit how much, how far he can hit off the tee, but he's a good iron player. He, you know, we'll see how he does with the putter. So I, I, I like the pick. There's a lot of upside there. This is his first time at Augusta, but I mean, when you're down in this price range, you can't really discriminate. You know, as for Cam Smith, I mean, that's a guy I like a lot too. He's not the longest guy. But he's really, you know, he's been hitting his irons pretty well. He's a really good scrambler and putter. And for a tournament that's probably going to be a birdie fest, that's important. Um, the only thing with Cam Smith is he's really popular. I've heard his name kind oh, of really? bad around a bunch of. Yeah, he's going to have a pretty high my picks. Yeah, ch- ch- <laughs> I fucking Ashy Larry over here, Sean. It's not. It's not me looking at other people's picks. It's them. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, listen, I. I everything looks good. You know, coming in, he's gained about 1.3 strokes per round on the field in his last four tournaments. You know, you're right. He does have that fifth place finish at the masters a couple of years ago. So knows how to get around. You know, I, I like to pick despite the popularity Kramer. All right. Well now, now we're getting a little bit further down the price points. And when I look at this person's headshot, I, I, I there's no drip. There's zero drip in this guy. Giant forehead. Looks like he definitely spent some time with glasses on, maybe staring into a computer. But his name appears to have the word crack in it. Mm. And and every good drip strip squad needs some some entertainment from time to time. So I went with Jason and, and Steve's gonna correct my pronunciation, I'm sure. Jason 
co crack. Cock rack. I got some people having I almost went cock rack. I figured that wasn't <laughs> correct though. Um yeah, I mean uh, in in good form, uh fit fit in my budget and uh just another guy. He's putting really well. Uh, not a, not a ton of stuff. I, I stole this from the uh the, the couple places I uh, I searched around before the but I, I like that the crack is in the name. 7000 Sean. Yes. I, I didn't have much for him. Well, now now we're getting some we need some crafty veterans here and oh. I'm going to 47-year-old uh -oh. Lee Westwood. <laughs> uh -oh. Tossing him in here. He's only uh $7200 and classic uh you know, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. 19 top 10s in majors. So I I think he's capable of coming in here, getting that top 10. Maybe not a guy you you want to put a dark horse bet to win it all, but at 7200 I think he's a high floor mm. guy okay. and the ceiling is certainly a top 10 for me when it comes to Lee Westwood, Steve. All right. I mean, two really good picks again. Let's start with Jason oh. Kokrak though. So, you know, Kramer, <laughs> you're right. He is playing really well. He won the CJ cup a couple weeks ago and that kind of a little bit was a sneak preview as far as how the masters would go because they overseeded all the grass there. He had a lot of uneven lies. So, you know, I mean, and he won that. And he has all the attributes you're looking for in a contender this week. You know, he's really long off the tee, a really good iron player. And you're right. The putter has been really good. What concerns me a little bit co crack is that historically he's not a very good putter. So has he just figured it out on the greens and this is just who he is now, or is he going to regress? I don't know. I mean, we can't get in these guys' minds. We don't see every single putt they hit on the practice screen. I wish we did, but we can't. So, um, you know, he is going to be popular this week, this pricing where he's at, it definitely was set before he won the CJ cup because he's probably about, I would say 700, $800 too low. I mean, even though this is his first masters with the form he's in, he shouldn't be 7,000 bucks. So I think a lot of people are going to use this kind of as a free space in their lap. And as for uh, Lee Westwood, listen, there, there's no bigger fan of Lee Westwood than me. I love this guy. And, I, <laughs> and I've always rooted for him in order to get over the top. I had really high hopes for him like in the months leading up, just because I was in the assumption it was going to be cold, windy, and that's kind of a Lee Westwood type, yeah. you know, masters, but it's not going to be like that this, this week. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, at least for me, the temperatures look like it's going to be mid to upper seventies. Most of the week going to get a lot of rain and wind is not really in the forecast anymore. So while he has really good course history, I'm not sure if this is the weather conditions for him, but listen, I, if anyone who wants to use Lee Westwood, in a DFS lineup, I'm going to co-sign just because I'm a big fan of his. Sean, I, I almost went Lee Westwood, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm tempted to switch it, but with the theme of my drip, uh, we needed someone to supply the cocaine for the party. So <laughs> I found a Colombian, Sebastian Munoz. Okay, uh, he's 67. Never heard of this guy. I, I'm a little concerned because I don't think he's a great uh, a driver of the golf ball, but he has been pretty efficient with the wedges and the approach shots. So I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm going to let Steve either, either commend me for my pick and tell me why I'm smart or just shit on it. And I'll uh, throw it to you, Sean, this guy again, doing some bargain shopping here, but give me C woo Kim. It, it wouldn't be a draft King golf draft Kings lineup. If Sean <laughs> didn't go with the, uh, with some form of Asian golfer. Well, and I, I zagged and I didn't put Tommy Fleetwood oh, in, in I, the, I, uh, <laughs> in the lineup. So Steve, you'll be happy. You don't have to discuss Tommy Fleetwood, but, but <laughs> see Woo Kim. I, I think he's going to, uh, you know, he's going to challenge uh, Morikawa on the team, keep him focused there. And see Woo Kim, he's a guy got a uh, one no idea PGA Tour card at the age of seventeen oh, wow. in two thousand twelve, the youngest player ever to get through the qualifying tournament. So he's kind of been a prodigy who hasn't quite oh. fully popped. But even though he's only twenty five, he's still making his fourth. Start at the Masters, coming off a uh, twenty-one, twenty-first uh, finish last year. So balls are going to drop this year. He's a guy who has some experience, not a lot of pressure, and has played somewhat decently at this course. So give me Siwoo oh. Kim at sixty-eight hundred. Steve, are you uh, are I'm, you, I'm are you drinking the Kim Kim action here? I mean, two really good picks again, guys. Oh, I, don't, I don't think I don't think I crapped <laughs> on much. I mean, listen, I think I was harshest on Morikawa, but. I mean, I, I'm, I, I love his ball striking. So that's not even as bad. So, all right. So let's start with Sebastian Munoz. I mean, you're right. He doesn't gain a whole lot of strokes off the tee, but he's a little longer than most of these guys in this range. And I think the reason why some of his 
strokes gain off the tee stats a little suppressed because he's a little erratic off the tee, but with all the moisture on the golf course, he's going to play a little wider. I think that's going to help him out this week. And he's a really good iron player, a good scrambler. He's gained about one and a half shots on the field over his last 16 rounds. And that's one of the highest clips in the under $7,000 range. So um, I think this is his first masters. I think he's going to be a good fit for this golf course. So I like that pick. And as for see what Kim, you know, listen, he disappointed last week, but overall he's been really good since the summer Had a close call of the Wyndham. You know, he's a good iron player, good scrambler. He, he's a little short off the tee, but he hits his longer irons pretty well. You know, if you're going to be shorter this week, you got to have good iron play and see who definitely has that. So again, I mean, I, I, I think you guys nailed it. I think with this DraftKings lineup, I'm just picturing a celebration when Sean pulls down the million of just a <laughs> see woo. That was, I do imagine myself sitting in this very garage yelling. Woo. Well, when, well, let me ask woo. you what time will the masters be on for Sunday or when do you so, think it'll, that when do you think the final round will conclude on Sunday. Yeah. yeah that's, that's well, f- so for you guys, it's going to start at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Perfect. And it's, it's going to wrap up at noon. So probably the final putt will drop around two 30. Well, no, it'll be 1130 for you guys. And then they'll do the half hour, you know, put on the green jacket, everything like that, and then go home. So listen, you're probably going to miss, I don't know, halftime, maybe a little bit through the third quarter, but listen, it's master's week. It's the only time we're going to get it this year. You guys can afford to skip, I don't know, Eagles Giants. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to avoid <laughs> See, the Giants. This is best case that. scenario. You don't, you don't have to watch uh, Danny Dimes turn it over five times against the Eagles. Or I don't have to watch Carson Wentz just fall into sacks like he's been doing all year too. So oh. I mean, yeah, listen, I guess I, I can't I, really I, talk too much shit about uh, turnovers. Whoa. I'm sorry. So hey, listen, I mean, it's Masters Week. It's something to be excited about, and you know, put the football. Football can wait, guys. All right, you know, tune into Augusta because it's going to be low scoring, packed leaderboard. I think it's going to be really exciting. You know, Steve, so we'll just get an extra TV. Don't yeah. worry. We'll Steve, watch it do all. you think uh, the people CBS they're worried about going head to head with our pregame Periscope on Sunday uh, that the Masters <laughs> ratings could be down? I I think they could be worried about it. All right, Kramer. No, I, 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 I think they're definitely terrified. I think they up the fees with uh, IBM in order to pay more just in case, because you know, there's going to be less eyeballs. All right, let's do it. Let's throw out a lock, a dog and a, a DJ only golfer Kramer. Oh. I'll go first. My lock as, and I don't usually like to go this chalky, but I put him in the DFS lineup. Give me a little taste of Justin Thomas at plus a thousand, a 10 to one. He's kind of uh, my, uh, of the big boys. I'm going with him. I mean, even over Bryson, which you know Steve made a great case for, but at six to one, it's just I got to go at least ten to one. My dog in the main range, in like the, the mid range, there is Wolf at uh, plus four thousand, and of course, hashtag Dejans only because you made fun of Colin Murakawa. I'm going C. Woo, Kim oh. at a hundred to one. It's always fun to have a couple bucks on the long shots. Kramer, what do you got for us? Uh, Brooks, give me for a lock for a dog. <laughs> Why not some Bubba Watson magic for another for another year at the beauty? I mean, he's thirty to one, not not this the longest of the dogs. And for my D Gens only, what's big enough, Sean? Is seventy to one big enough? I think yeah, anything over Jason Co Crack. <laughs> Let's go. I the the Colombian uh, Munez is is one hundred and ten to one, but that's 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 getting a little crazy. Silly. All right. Well, Steve, appreciate you calling into the podcast. And, and if you want to know what Steve likes, oh, uh, I, yeah. I certainly, certainly recommend subscribing to the golf gambling podcast. They go so hard, so deep, so much DFS player props, all the deep stuff. And then of course, sports gambling podcast.com tons of articles up already. And uh, Steve will be going head to head with his golf gambling podcast co-host. Boston capper in a uh, bonus masters edition of let it ride. So, so much Steve and masters related content all over at sports gambling podcast.com. Steve appreciate it. And uh, best of luck with the picks, man. All right. Thanks guys. Have a good night. Always fun talking golf with our boy, Steve Shermer thrive fantasy. Ooh, thrive fantasy, man. They got a lot going on this week as well. They have a ton of stuff going for the masters. So make sure you head over to thrivefantasy.com. Use that promo code SGP. Get that instant deposit match up to $50. 
or NFL. And we're going to be giving out our Thursday night picks here for the Thrive Fantasy Thursday night game, $25 entry fee. And as you know, third place gets you $500. How do I know that, Ryan? Because I cashed it myself last week and I gave out the picks. So the picks are free, the deposit bonus is free. I don't know what you're waiting on. It's uh, so fun, so easy to do. NFL, they give you 20 player props. You pick your 10 favorite props over under. It's just that simple. Head over to thrivefantasy.com, promo code SGP, sign up and prop up today. Kramer, interesting game. Colts, Titans, and I think it'll be fun. We'll save our pick for the uh, live show on Thursday night, what we actually like on the game. And, but maybe you can kind of figure it out from the, and I don't even think I've decided the actual side I like on this game. I'm, I, I got to lean, but I do think it's become very clear with this Colts offense for a couple of things. One, Philip Rivers has trouble throwing it down the field. Two, Jonathan Taylor is in the doghouse. Yeah. And uh, three, it's going to be a lot of check down stuff, I think, for this ten uh, for this Colts defense. Well, one thing that I would c- call out with the Colts offense is that they, they have had m- moments against poor defenses. Yeah. So and they are one and, of these. And I'm not buying the hype that Tennessee is a good defense all of a sudden because. We watched that game. It was more just the Bears' offensive line was so horrible. Foles is a statue. It was what I called out in that this was a great matchup for any defensive line against the Bears' offensive line that was just completely, yeah, beaten up and and just wasn't a hundred percent, well, not even close to a hundred percent. So, with that being said, give me Philip Rivers over twenty six and a half completions. I think they end up throwing it a lot, but it's a lot of quick, easy check down stuff. To get Philip in a rhythm and get him going over 26 and a half completions. Yeah, I, I co signed that with you. I, I it's very similar logic. While I guess this could be, a, they just, they don't seem to be the offense we thought they were going to be. And I don't know if it's going to be running the ball this week. I think you have to attack Tennessee through the air a little bit. And so I, I do like for him to, it's scary to take over 260 for the yards. So I, I same logic. I went with the the completions. Completion seems a little bit easier. And Jonathan Taylor, I I just don't see him getting a ton of carries. They clearly have lost faith in the kid. He's a rookie. Maybe he'll figure it out. But under forty five and a half rushing yards, I'm all over that one. See, I'm gonna go the other way here wow. to be to be contrarian because I, I do think this is a a decent matchup. And I just who else? Are they it, I, I Wilkins is he's okay. It's got to be Taylor. They have to rely on him to do something at some point. So I went over here just to kind of be. be I, different. I think I think Wilkins is going to be involved. And uh, while we're over at the Circa, or maybe I just log into mybookie.ag, I think Hines gets involved in the passing game as well. I'm also going under a half rushing touchdown for Jonathan Taylor. Again, that fumble for the defensive touchdown backbreaker. It's not good. And I I don't think they're going to trust him in big situations like the goal line. So now under I a half. Didn't want to play that it. one, but I saw Michael Pittman coming back from injury. He he profiles to be one of the receivers that Philip likes to throw to. He's a bigger guy, uh, good body control, good hands. Over thirty five and a half yards, quite low. Uh, I grabbed that one. Mm. I also Pittman. I th- they do seem to get involved. Uh, I'm also going to say he pops his touchdown cherry. I think he's going <laughs> to. I think he's going to get very involved very quickly now that he's healthy. So I, I also went over a half receiving touchdowns p- for 120 points, Sean. Zach Pascal. Mm. I feel like we always have these Colts games on, and I'm always looking up, and he's he's you know running some slant over the middle. They haven't really found a ton of chemistry with T. Y. Hilton, so I'm going over Pascal, 37 and well, a half. Well, Sean, I was yards. always more of a Cobol fan myself. <laughs> Uh, sorry. That is that is next level nineties nerd. nerd humor for anyone. Yeah, you have to. Uh, that is a deep reference, right? It's it's to the point where that's like literally like that's like a thirty year old joke, Sean. It's been <laughs> it's been aging this entire time. Uh, I also went over on Jordan Wilkins, ninety points for over thirty three and a half. I think they're going to run the ball, and so I'm adding both of these totals together, and it's still only what eighty yards. Yes, please. They're going to run for more than more than eighty yards in the game. So Jonathan Taylor, uh, I took the over. I'm doing the same with Wilkins. Yeah, I. Uh, what else do I got here? Jordan Wilkins. Yes, I'm also on the over rushing yards. I think he's going to get the bulk load of the carries there, at, and thirty three and a half. That seems really low. Uh, like I, I may just bet this individually as a prop as well. But yeah, Jordan Wilkins. They they seem to like him. I mean, we remember that that game before that, right? He he yeah. was the guy that went off and. 
they seem to trust him. And, and you know, when you watch him run, it, it, it's shades of Carlos Hyde, but he doesn't seem to fumble the ball. And sometimes coaches like guys that just know which hole to run in. So uh, I myself, that was a slot. I, you know, some a little hole variance is always good from time to time, Sean. Uh, I'm going to give you two at the same time, Sean. Derrick Henry under both ways, uh, yardage Ooh. and touchdowns. Again, looking to be a little different here, but. This is a fucking defense, and Darius Leonard's a man. He really is. And so I, I think if there's ever going to be a week that Derrick Henry struggles a little bit, uh, I think. Well, I think he struggled against the Bears. He didn't. He didn't have a ton of yards. I'm actually going over mm-hmm. on his 82 and a half rush yards. The angle there is, I think this is just a volume thing. I think he's going to get, you know, like 85 yards on 25 carries. So I don't think he's going to have a massive day. But 82 and a half is a little low. Considering his carry volume, uh, an under I like though is Trey Burton under thirty four and a half receiving yards. Under is you're only getting ninety five points, so juice shaded a little bit there. But it seems like he he likes Mo Ali Cox. Mo Ali Cox limited participant. Jack Doyle is going to be out, but Burton he gets some like weird goal line touches and they use him in the red zone. But I don't he he's not like a huge yardage guy. So uh, I'm going under there. Trey Burton, I like that. Uh, what else do I have, Sean? I have Jonu Smith over twenty-seven and a half uh, yards. I, I think of all the matchups f- uh, for this defense that look vulnerable, this is one of them. He's kind of been a little bit of a. I mean, I, I think he scored a touchdown last week, but he hasn't. He's kind of been underperforming. Didn't really go off though. I, yeah. I think this could be a nice week for him. So give me the over twenty-seven and a half. And Trey Burton, he's only gone over thirty-four and a half receiving yards once this season. And that's even including a couple times. That was that one week you know where what? everyone else was injured. I'm gonna shift. I'm gonna. I'll take that with you. I like that. It, it's. I think it's a pretty solid one. Ryan Tannehill total passing touchdowns and interceptions combined. I'm going under. He doesn't throw a ton of picks. I don't see him throwing a ton of passing touchdowns. When's the last time we've seen Tannehill look really bad? He doesn't look horrible, but he didn't look that good in that Bears game. Like his numbers were pretty bad. Uh, but I look at this like. Obviously, the over is plus juice for a reason. But when I look at this, this feels like a Tannehill can get two interceptions kind of game. Well, or it could be Tannehill gets three touchdowns. The, the touchdowns and interception combined is an interesting I, prop to handicap. I took the over on this because it, it does. It it feels like this is a variance prop. Like you want to take the more high, and I know Tannehill has been pretty steady, but I, I I really like what this defense can do to you, and I. I think we've seen the worst of Tannehill when Derrick Henry can't get going. So the play action doesn't work. Tannehill's in trouble. I'm going to take over the two and a half uh, TDs and interceptions. That's my ten, Sean. Okay, uh, Corey Davis under receiving touchdown uh, again. I don't see Tannehill lighting it up with the passing touchdowns. Corey Davis, you're paying for it. Under is only eighty points, but I've I've learned that uh, you know don't no no don't um, don't overthink it too much when it comes to these. Like, I, I think I got into trouble chasing value and just oh, you know, going upside. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not doing that anymore. This one though, I Ryan, you are the kicking expert. I accidentally clicked over on this. I had to edit my pick, but give me under uh, Stephen Gaskowski six and a half. I know, I know it's very low, and they maybe they hold him to field goals, but this guy's got, and even though it's a dome, this guy's got missed field goals written all over. This is what scared me off this prop was the idea Kick that the, the K expert. Well, the Colts are gonna, the Colts have one of those defenses that you can kind of move the ball a little bit, but the closer you get to the end zone, the more they're gonna tighten up. So could there be opportunities for him to kick some field goals? Yes. Could those be opportunities be longer? And we've seen this guy. He's clearly, I mean, either, either he's got action going the other way or they just <laughs> going to hook one of these. Like we, we saw it with Vinatieri last, it, some of these guys are just old. Like the leg isn't working the same. I get it. I mean, I could still knock it home from 47. I don't know about Goskowski. I, I actually passed that one. Well, so. I, I don't think their team total is going to be that high. So even if they get to 17, that's two extra points and a field goal. The scary scenario is they can, they, they routinely drive to like the 35, 30 yard line and he bangs a couple home. Cause then it's just an extra point. Yeah. Uh, I still think he fucks it up. Give me, give me under on gas Kramer moving right along, talking more NFL DFS. 
before we get to that, I want to shout out Ace Per Head. Ace is the place if you're thinking about starting your own sports book. And now would be the week to do it. Jesus Christ, you got NFL, so much in college football, the Masters. So much going on, so much to bet on. And why not start booking your own action? Become your own sportsbook operator. Just go to aceperhead.com slash SGP. Aceperhead dot com slash S G P ACE is the place. If you're considering starting your own sports book, use our sign up link and get up to six weeks free. That's right. Six weeks free. Ace is the place you want to start your own sports book. Kramer. Let's do it. Let's talk millionaire maker lineups. What do you got? Oh my goodness. What a glorious week. <laughs> uh, you know, when I started, I was like, oh man, how do I, how do I not? Oh God. Do I re- I ha- I've twice now gone from having Jared Goff, uh, Robert Woods and Cooper cup in there to just ripping it out. Cause I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. Jared Goff sucks. sucks Island. It's a strong island. I can't go there this weekend. Russ is going to be in fuck you mode. That powers could power the defense. It's a divisional game. So I went back to the well and I took Mr. Josh Allen. No, oh, so a, did I. Oh, really? God yep. damn it. I just love the matchup. I mean, what we saw last week, either Tua got really good really quickly, or maybe Arizona's defense isn't all that good. And, and, and oh, by the way, I mean, we had Coach Leach, Mike Leach on the program. Uh, he essentially Cliff Kingsbury's mentor yes, when it comes to Cliff coaching, Kitchens said that he's going to struggle with the defense and this, struggle. They have, this isn't a team that you want to struggle. Now it's a weird spot. I am like, we're kind of chasing points, but it's not like he, I, you wouldn't be shocked if he did something similar this week after seeing the way Tua performed, especially the way Tua gashed them on the ground. Yes. They, they struggle with the rushing quarterback. And I think when you're playing these tournament lineups, there are so many good rushing quarterbacks right now. It's it's tough not to include one of them because you look at these guys up here. Even Kyler going the other way. That's an interesting angle. Um, I, I think you almost even Watson. He he gets loose a bunch. Like I think you're crazy kind of not to take uh, one of these guys that can give you that rushing upside. Possibly a letdown spot for Buffalo overall, but I think DFS fantasy wise, great spot. Josh Allen, seventy five hundred. Who's your who's your first running? Well, back? real quick, ju- I mean, just just because we both gave out the same guy at the top of the heap, is there anyone down there? If if you went if you went cheap, is there anyone that you would go that you you circled? Because for me, it's Baker Mayfield this week. As crazy as that is, assuming he comes off the COVID list against that Houston defense for six thousand. Yeah, he's interesting. I mean, you could make a case for Carson Wentz. Yeah, there you go. Against the will, Giants will Danny defense. Dimes run for another hundred yards? <laughs> All right, uh, my running back, Sean. I, well, and Herbert in garbage time. I think. I, I think Miami. I don't know. I've been. I've been talking to Decker about that, but Herbert's an interesting play as well. What are you doing, running back? Aaron says? Jones. I, I, I got. I had to get Aaron Jones in the lineup against Jacksonville. I didn't want to miss out on this opportunity. He's going to have a big, 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 big game. Well, speaking of opportunity, give me going the other way, my boy James Robinson. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this Green Bay rushing defense is is not good. I mean, they got out to a huge lead against San Francisco, and it wasn't an issue. But I think with Jacksonville, even if they get down, Robinson's going to be involved in the passing game. I, I I just see him involved a ton. I think even if they get into a garbage time spot, he could get goal line carries, uh, catches. So sixty six hundred James Robinson, love him here. Thought about that angle. Uh, uh, what was his price? Sixty seven hundred. Sixty six. That's crazy. He's become like a top flight guy. Yeah, and he's he's putting up the numbers, and he's not battling it out carry wise with any other. He's just the guy in Jacksonville. Uh, now, granted, it's their offense, but if they were able to move the ball against Houston. He kind of even had a low scoring game against Houston. Still put up fifteen point nine. Yeah. So uh, Sean, how's, uh, how's Kyle Allen doing? Everything. All right with him. No, he's, he's out he's for done. the season. Okay, he's done. Alex Smith is going to be the quarterback. Yep. And this is the Alex Smith who has a stat at, uh, over at the football outsiders named after him uh, to measure propensity of throwing it downfield, essentially uh, named after Mr. At Mr. Alex Smith. Cause he doesn't throw it downfield at all. JD McKissick. Yep. Four, also got him 4900. Four, 14 targets last week. Sean. It's an insane. 14. You know who else is kind of interesting uh on the uh 
on the football team there. Cam Sims, uh, just a random receiver. He had like three catches for 110 yards. Uh, he's that dude with dreads that we kept seeing catching balls for Washington. He could be an interesting play. Keep an eye on the injuries. I, mean, I think he was just filling in, but uh, if some of those guys don't go, he could be a late flex guy you drop in. But I'm also on McKissick at 4,900. And then you sprinkle in Detroit and just how awful they they looked yeah. against the running back uh, last week. It, so easy money. All right, let's stack it up. I assume you have Diggs. Yep, Diggs 7,500. Uh, sure, you you could be worried about him getting shut down. No, no, you can't. He just doesn't like dumb trade Vikings. Dumb trade. Yeah, he gets double digit targets every doesn't time. Doesn't matter. He's and like he's DeAndre Hopkins in terms of the 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 like matchup proof. And he didn't have any touchdowns last game, so I think he's kind of due to get one uh, this game. Gabe Davis stole a lot of touchdowns, and he's an interesting guy so to weird. keep your eye on. Uh, I I don't think I would play him this week, but. Maybe like the following week or in a couple of weeks when he uh, reemerges. I didn't double stack this week, Sean. Next up, uh, I went. I went actually over to to Mr. Russ because we know he's cooking this week, and it's been a little. Unlimited. It's been a little while uh, since Tyler Lockett's done anything. Mm. Uh, Metcalf is going to have a matchup this week. Jalen Ramsey, I, I think. I think Jalen Ramsey can do some. I mean, obviously, How it's, not, it's impossible Ryan. to completely stop. Mr. DK Metcalf, but you can slow him down at yeah, 6,500 too. And, and for 6,500, I, I think we're going to see, you know, some form of a game where the Seattle offense passes the ball a lot. So 6,500 Tyler Lockett, this guy, it's a layup again. He's getting double digit targets every single week. Keenan Allen, $7,100. The chargers running backs, they're all banged up. They're going to have to throw the ball. Herbert has a real connection with him. And Miami, their defense has been good, but uh, they certainly showed some vulnerabilities there uh, in Arizona. To me, this is more just a PPR play, though. I, I think he's just going to get a ton of look and a, a ton of catches. Next up, I, I had to get someone against the Seattle defense because they're mm. so bad, and I, I I went this I went to this well a couple weeks back, and it worked out well for me. Josh Reynolds only thirty five hundred this week for some reason. Uh, isn't he clearly the third guy? Yeah, I never understand the the target splits in Los Angeles. All right, there. let's look at that. Last uh, last two, eight targets, nine targets, and yet his price point still basement uh, when he has this glorious match. If we know what we we know what the Seattle defense is at this point, I know it's hard to get Jared Goff in there. We discussed this, I think, before the but I had to get a receiver, so I went Josh Reynolds, saved some money too, thirty five hundred. I had a little bring back in the cards game and maybe I'm chasing points again, but mm. I, I like this guy, especially over the middle, uh, you know, where those linebackers are, or maybe the safeties going to the outside to help with Deandre Hopkins, but give me Christian Kirk, $5,700. He seems to have a real connection going uh, with their boy, Kyler uh, coming off a, a game where he had eight for one twenty three and a touchdown. I I think he could he might do that again against his Buffalo defense, which has really struggled with dynamic, speedy receivers. I could see Christian Kirk getting behind their secondary pretty easily. So, Christian Kirk, fifty seven hundred. Sean, yes, revenge spot here at the tight end position. Evan Ingram, <laughs> I fucking hate him right now. He blew the game against the Eagles last time. Joe Judge realizes that he wants to help get the monkey off his back. And and the Eagles have just been trash against the tight end, so it's a plus 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 matchup. He gets a shitload of targets. He's gonna finally do something with it. Evan Ingram has a monster. He has the game that they the Giants drafted him for finally, years later against the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm also going to the Eagles Giants game, Ryan, but I'm going to the other side. Give me Dallas Goddard, forty two hundred dollars. Zach Ertz has always dominated the Giants, having big games against them. No Zach Ertz, and possibly the man they call the next Zach Ertz, the Yak Ertz, the guy mm. who actually gets yards after the catch. Dallas Goddard, uh, they've just always done well at the tight end spot against this Giants defense historically. Goddard came back uh, for that Cowboys game, but Didn't he was still much. wasn't quite a hundred percent. Now he's coming off the bye. Get some time to resync with Carson Wentz, and when he was in there early, he was he was one of their best receivers. Obviously, that was pre-Fulgham, 
But uh, Dallas Goddard, forty two hundred dollars. Love the matchup. It does seem like the, maybe it's a product of who's out there, Sean. But it does seem like Wentz is throwing the receivers more, a lot more than he has historically. Yeah, well, and even Richard Rodgers last game against the Giants had a pretty good game uh, for Richard Rodgers, all things considered. But I, I think I think Goddard has. They're going to plan to use Goddard a bunch in this game. I think. And I think you know the, the Giants are shockingly not horrible this year. I, I, for my flex. Against the tight end, I should say. But for my flex, Christian Kirk, uh, just like you, I, I had to bring it back. Hopkins was way too much, and it seems like Kirk's getting more and more involved in this offense. Hopefully, it wasn't just a matchup thing last week with the the top corners out on the outside there. But uh, I'm gonna f- I'm gonna flow back to that matchup too because bu- it's not like Buffalo has been uh, been all that good. No, I mean it, on and, defense. And, and couldn't you see a similar game flow that we saw in that no. Seattle Buffalo in there will Buffalo be points Arizona? In this game. There will be points. It's a dome. You got two quarterbacks who like running the ball, not afraid to chuck it deep. Uh, who knows those games where you think it's going to be high scoring. Although we thought Seattle Buffalo is going to be high scoring, and it was. I mixed things up a little bit. Ryan went double tight end set. I haven't said this name in a long time when it comes to fantasy, Uh-oh. but when there's a new quarterback, sometimes you see he has some instant chemistry with a pass catcher. Give me Tyler Eifert of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Five targets, four catches. Uh, with his boy I see Jake that. Luton and Tyler Eifert's only twenty seven hundred bucks. I could see him having a decent day against this Packers s- defense, which is not good. <laughs> you said Luton like it's a Luton. Luton, like it's a code word for a skin flute. <laughs> Kramer, what are we on? Defense? Sorry, I was thinking about my sweet joke. Oh, I thought you were thinking about skin flutes over there. Skin flutes. Uh, w- once upon a time, you know, uh, I I had so. <laughs> I had twenty eight hundred dollars, Sean. Okay. And it, when you look at the twenty, like it, when you look at all the defenses under the twenty eight hundred dollar umbrella, they're all kind of shit. Mm-hmm. And so, I, I went, I went to a situation where I ended up saving, uh, not spending all my money, and I'm just gonna fade Jared Goff. I'm just gonna fade Jared Goff. I'm gonna play the Seahawks defense. I'm gonna say Jared Goff makes some mistakes. And uh, stay tuned to the Twitter feed, and maybe I'll throw a dart at one of these other defenses. I, I considered playing the Raiders; they're pretty shitty. So, so is that offense for Denver. But uh, I'm gonna just play a fade of Mr. Uh, Jared Goff. Say how he gets much, me a touchdown. How much did you have? Twenty eight hundred. Wow! So scared to play the Giants' defense at home. Says a lot, Ryan. I'm taking the Eagles' defense for thirty six hundred dollars. Are you kidding me? It's not a good move. They're second in the league sacks per game, and. Uh, Danny Dimes coming off a, a game where he did not turn the ball over. Regression indicator. Are you kidding me? How does he not turn the ball over in this game, Ron? I mean, he's taking, he's, it's progression. He's <laughs> progressing. Sean. Hasn't he turned the ball over in every game in his career except two games? Yeah, so maybe he's and due again, f- two for a couple. Okay. He did fumble twice, though. He recovered both of them. Yeah. Or no, wait. Maybe he didn't. Uh, oh no, he did fumble. All right, he didn't throw any interceptions, so he's due. Had four interceptions past uh, four games, but not last game. Take so your shade I think somewhere he's, else, Sean. I think he's due. You're the, nervous. The Giants' offensive line. We're going to be able to get some you're, pressure. You're nervous. The, a loss here, and the division race is back up for grabs. <laughs> well, you guys would be what three and seven then? Yeah. No, we would still be a game, uh, a loss, and a tie ahead of you guys. So. First time you've ever heard someone brag about being a tie ahead of you. <laughs> Three, four, and one, baby. You're gonna break your neck looking up at us, Ryan. All right. I mean, I, again, I at this point, I'd prefer if Gettleman got fired. So I guess worse is better. But all rise, <laughs> all rise, and everyone tune in to the live show from the Circa Sports Book Thursday night, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 o'clock East. That's how you're gonna figure out. We're gonna announce how to get that five hundred dollar cash prize. How much? Five hundred dollars. Wait, so do you have to buy a ticket to the show or something? No, or is that and of free? course it's gonna be free because the audience already earned the five hundred dollars. Oh. We're just gonna announce how we're gonna divvy it out, or uh, maybe a little, uh, maybe a little and, and how, DFS and action, right? A contest? Contest? Could a be. duel? Uh, and and how do people uh, how do people watch that show again? youtubecom slash sports gambling podcast, or you can watch it on Twitter at gambling podcast. So options. much, so much masters content. Make sure you check out our buddies over at the golf gambling podcast. 
just putting the let it ride game show. We did an early edition, a master's edition that's yep. on the sports gambling podcast network feed. Uh, the debut of a MMA gambling podcast on the sports gambling podcast network feed. And of course the college experience putting out five, six uh, episodes a week. There's you, so much going on, right? Uh, a full maxion episode, NBA uh, draft, those college basketball. Do you, do you have a, a train sound effect on the board? Because <laughs> the content train nope. is going full steam. Just like the snow piercer. You ever seen that one? Sean? Do a motherfucker face. The That's Marshawn, the closest I have to a train. The, the Marshawn Lynch express. He is the content train. Thank you guys. Of course, giving us those ratings, those reviews. Giving out merch Monday, every Monday, and Champ Champ Eleven was this Monday's winner. Champ Champ, but you can be too. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Let's get two times a million dollars this week. Kramer, let it ride.